People create time for what and who they care about even when they are continually busy. When it comes to you, it is not about their timetable, it's about their priorities, which is a difficult pill to swallow because it forces you to confront the reality that you might not be as important to them as they are to you. The harsh reality is that being busy is often a polite way of saying, I don't want to spend time with you. It's easier for them to blame it on their schedule than to admit that they're choosing not to include you in their life. It's a passive-aggressive way of keeping you at arm's way without having to deal with the confrontation that would come from telling you the truth. They want to keep you on the hook just in case, rather than investing in the connection. I have been on both sides of this. There were instances when I was the one creating excuses because I didn't know how to tell someone I'd outgrown the friendship. But being on the receiving end taught me an important lesson. It is better being honest, even if it is uncomfortable. When I eventually called out my friend for always being busy, the conversation was difficult, but essential. It provided me with the insight I needed to move forward and put my time and energy in relationships in which I felt respected. If someone is constantly too busy for you, it's time to reassess the relationship. You deserve to be around people who are excited to see you who make an effort to include you in their lives. Not just when it's convenient for them, but because they genuinely enjoy your company. Let's be honest. Most people are hesitant to tell you directly that they hate you. Instead, they hide behind false smiles, hollow compliments and forced civility, all in the name of friendship. I guess that has to end now, and I'm going to teach you how. I have been there. I know how these kind of things feel. However, let me put you in my shoes. We might look at this from the same direction. There came a time I thought someone was a friend, only to discover that they were secretly plotting my destruction. It sounds brutal, right? But here is the truth. If you don't identify these signs early enough, you'll waste your time and energy on individuals who, deep down, despise you. So let's cut the chit-chats and discuss the indicators that someone hates you but is too afraid to tell you in your face. You may not like what you are about to hear, but it is better to face the facts than to live in denial. Number one, they constantly laugh at your flaws, weaknesses, and loves it when you cry well, you know. We all have that one person who loves to joke, especially when the joke is on you right. The type of people that will pick at your quirks, your mistakes, your little imperfections, and often do so with a smile saying, I'm just messing with you, you know. Well, it seems harmless at first, but let's not kid ourselves. These jokes are often more than just playful banters. Their deliberate insults, carefully veiled as humor, are intended to chip away at your self-esteem gradually. I remember being close to someone who constantly had something else to say about me on how I dressed, spoke and acted. At first I laughed it off, believing it was all in good faith. But as time passed, I began to see a pattern in their every action. The jokes were always directed at my perceived weaknesses, never toward my virtues. It wasn't long before I began to have second thoughts. I found myself wondering if I was the problem, if these errors were really as obvious as they appeared. Here's where the controversy starts. Those who repeatedly joke about your flaws aren't doing it out of affection. They are testing the waters to see how much disrespect you will tolerate. It's a subtle sort of manipulation that allows them to assert power while keeping you in your position. They make it clear that you are beneath them. The most insidious thing is that they get away with it because we've been trained to believe it. If we can't take a joke, we're the problem. I'm here to tell you that there's nothing wrong with standing up for yourself when a joke goes too far. In fact, you deserve to be surrounded by individuals who encourage you, not those that knock you down for a cheap chuckle. True friends do not need to point out your imperfections to make themselves feel better. True friend recognize your skills and assist you in working through your weaknesses 
without making you the brunt of the joke. I've seen this happen before against individuals who tolerate these types of jokes believing that it is easier to keep the peace than to cause trouble. But here's the deep truth. Allowing others to disrespect you even in jokes is a slippery slope. It starts with small comments, but over time those jokes can wear you down making you question your worth. And the more you allow it, the more they'll push until you're left doubting yourself, all because you didn't want to seem too sensitive. I had to learn this the hard way. I realized that by laughing along, I was giving them permission to keep going. I was complicit in my own disrespect. It wasn't until I started pushing back and creating boundaries that I noticed a difference not just in how people treated me, but also in how I perceived myself. I stopped allowing their words to define me and began owning my story. So here is my recommendation. My fellow Sigmas, the next time someone cracks a joke at your expense, don't laugh it off. Ask yourself, is this truly funny or is there something more going on here? And if the answer doesn't work in your interest, don't be scared to confront them. It could feel uncomfortable. It may even end the friendship but your self-esteem is far more valuable than someone else's faulty sense of humor. Life is too short to surround yourself with people who don't see your value. Number two, their idea of friendship constantly point out your flaws. Well, you know, patterns like this are not easy to be spotted in corning individuals. However, when those you call friends start to laugh particularly at you flaws, then it's time to find new ones. Find the kind of friends that will truly care about you, the ones that will never feel the need to put you down, but will try their utmost best to see you feel good about themselves. So, stand tall, speak up, and let no one use you for a punch bag. Number three. They deliver compliments that sting like insults. We have all been there. Someone compliments you, but instead of feeling happy, you're left with a bitter aftertaste in your guts, as if you've been slapped with a velvet glove. It's the type of compliment that makes you want to pause and reflect. So, was that a praise or an insult? And this is a painful truth that frequently occurs. These backhanded compliments are a subtle, even devious technique for individuals to disparage you while appearing to be nice. I recall a period when I was working on a major project that I was quite proud of. After several days of hard work, I eventually shared my discovery with a group of colleagues. One of them, I thought, was a supporter said with a smile, wow, this is actually pretty good for someone like you. I stood there, stunned. On the surface, it seemed like a compliment, but those last few words for someone whom I thought was a friend hit me like a ton of bricks. You may want to ask, what did that even mean? Well, the answer is, was I not supposed to be capable of doing good work? And here's where the dispute lies. These ostensibly complimentary remarks have a deeper motive. They are intended to put you in your most vulnerable position, not to encourage you. It's a potent technique one that allows the recipient of the compliment to claim your supremacy while instilling doubt in you. For example, they can tell you something like, I see you trying, but you'll never be as good as me. It's poisonous, yet the way it's packaged makes you nearly overlook its toxicity. To keep you, they employ this cunning quip. To stay safe, examine yourself again to make sure you don't get too excited might come across as if they are patting you on the back while holding you down with the other hand. And here's where it gets even more controversial. We've all done it at some point, maybe not intentionally, but we've all let our insecurities slip out in the form of a compliment. Here's the deep message. Though you don't have to put up with this unexpected animosity, it is up to you to reject it and recognize it for what it is while getting a reflection of their fears. You don't have to accept comments like, you're smarter than you look, or this is good, especially if you're new to the field, as a measure of your value. 
Even if it creates unpleasant situations, call it out for what it is, because if you don't, you give them the authority to determine how you view yourself. Never give anything to anyone. I've come to understand that these praises are really just mirror reflections of other people's insecurities, and that is how it should appear to you. Rather than internalizing its sting, expose it. Ultimately, their statements reveal more about them than they ever expose. I now take offense at backhanded compliments and don't tolerate them. In conclusion, don't allow anyone to fail you. You are defined by your own thoughts and nothing more. Remember this, your worth isn't up for debate. Compliments should lift you up, not tear you down. If someone's words leave you questioning yourself, it's time to question their intentions. Life is too short to waste on people who can't genuinely celebrate your successes. Surround yourself with those who see your value and aren't afraid to let you know it without any strings attached. Number four, they quietly exclude you from the equation when it comes to fun stuffs and pleasurable activities. We all know little things hurt the most. Things such as discovering that your so-called friends intentionally neglect to invite you to a dinner, party or weekend getaway. And when you ask why, they'll vouch for the fact that it was a last-minute thing or say worse, others like, they think you were preoccupied. Anyways, let's be honest though, these are not just mishaps. This is the most subtle kind of social exclusion and a dead giveaway that you are not as important as you believe yourself to be. Too many times have I been the victim of this. I would have wanted to attend dinar parties and other fun stuffs. But no, nobody had ever told me about it in advance. They had a ton of reasons when I brought it up later. Oh, we mistook you for being busy or for having made the plan at the last minute. However, I knew the truth in my heart. They would have made sure I was there if they had wanted me to. I was aware of it. And this is where the problem lays. This kind of exclusion is intentional rather than just careless. It's a tactic used to communicate without words that they don't want you present but lack the courage to tell you directly. Rather, their expectation is that you would quietly leave the group without making a scene. This is cowardly and passive aggressive. However, it's also really common people. Don't talk about this much because it's easier to pretend it's not happening. Easier to swallow the excuses to convince yourself that it really was just a mistake rather than face the painful truth that you're being pushed out. But here's the thing, if you keep accepting those excuses, you're giving them permission to keep excluding you. You're letting them decide your place in their lives rather than taking control of your own narrative. I had to learn this the hard way. I said nothing for a long time, allowing those unintentional exclusions to pass, thinking maybe I would be included in the following time. However, I later understood that by remaining mute, I was giving in to being looked after as an afterthought. I began confronting them about these contentious actions. Hey, I noticed you guys went out last weekend, I would say. How come I wasn't invited? It made things uncomfortable and wasn't easy, but it also made them face their actions. And what do you know? The dynamics shifted, with some becoming defensive and others attempting to set things right. But the conclusion was evident. I was not going to go along with it, if they excluded me again. This is a profound message. People will go out of their way to involve you in their lives if they truly want you to. Regardless of how impromptu the occasion is, if they fail to do so, then it's time to reconsider how valuable those connections are. People that don't make you feel like you're always vying for their attention or approval are people you should be real companions with. These kinds of friends would make sure you're there because they genuinely enjoy your company. So if you find yourself being subtly excluded from plans, don't just brush it off. Confront it, ask questions and be prepared for the answers, even if they're not what you want to hear. Because at the end of the day, it's better to know where you truly stand 
than to be left out again. And remember, you're not a backup option, you're a priority. Therefore, surround yourself with people who treat you like you matter, not those who get busy only when it comes to you. Everybody has heard it before. I'm really busy right now. I apologize, but I have to be at work. This is a great way to justify being busy, isn't it? However, what occurs when you begin to see a pattern like this toward you, meanwhile they are constantly available to others, sharing photos of their adventures and catching up? This is the harsh reality. There isn't much going on. Simply put, they're too busy for you. More times than I'd like to admit, I found myself in that annoying scenario. I recall attempting to schedule a time to catch up with friends I used to be close with. They would always give the same excuse when I recommended something. It is always, I'm working late. Maybe next week I have a lot on my plate. Maybe next week. And so on the list goes. Meanwhile, I'd see them hanging out with other people, having a good time and always managing to make time for everyone except me. It took me longer than I would like to say to recognize they were not interested in hanging out with me. The loud message they sent was now clear to me. I wasn't a priority in their lives anymore. People create time for what and who they care about even when they are continually busy. When it comes to you, it is not about their timetable. It's about their priorities which is a difficult pill to swallow because it forces you to confront the reality that you might not be as important to them as they are to you. The harsh reality is that being busy is often a polite way of saying, I don't want to spend time with you. It's easier for them to blame it on their schedule than to admit that they're choosing not to include you in their life. It's a passive-aggressive way of keeping you at arm's way without having to deal with the confrontation that would come from telling you the truth. They want to keep you on the hook just in case rather than investing in the connection. I have been on both sides of this. Like and subscribe and if you think this video was eye-opening, wait till you watch this one on your screen.